welcome to the channel guys i am so excited because we are done with the traverse rebuild this is actually going to be my first one i think where we've done really like a start to finish rebuild in one video um this isn't 100 percent finished but i'm going to explain that here at the end of the video um and we'll do a walk around and you can see the finished product um picked up this traverse from copart and you probably saw i'll link it up here the initial video is showing all the damage you're gonna see a little bit of that throughout here but it took several weeks, um, took a bunch of different footage. I actually wasn't involved too much. Lance pretty much took over this rebuild, and he actually filmed 99, 100% of it. So I think we got everything in here. I haven't watched all the footage through because there's a ton of it. But I think we're going to end up in a way that it makes sense at the end. If it jumps around, I apologize. But uh, let's just fast forward, go through all the footage of rebuilding this, and I'll meet you back here. And we'll go around the finished product. Sound good? All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the channel. We are starting out today in the garage because it is a rainy day in Pennsylvania. And it's the only day of the week that I actually have any light that I'm not at work and can actually film. So um, it's just pouring down rain outside. We are working on the 2016, I don't know, I've said it a bunch of times, but the 2016, let's say, Chevy Traverse. It's going to be our first start on the rebuild project for this. Uh, we're going to start out, I believe, on the interior airbags, that type of stuff, so we can get all them out of there, make sure we don't have any warning lights or any other mechanical issues and stuff we got to uh, focus on before we get to all of the body work. So we are going to tear into probably pulling out the headliner right now, and then we'll see how much further we get. If you didn't see my other video where I introduced this car to the channel, we uh, picked this up from Copart, mainly for the reason that we already had basically all the parts to do this. We have another parts traverse. We started, uh, we rebuilt another traverse before I actually was really doing the channel very much here, so I don't have any video of it. Um, but we used the other side, the passenger side parts. The passenger side on this is all in good shape. Um, so we had a good driver's side from this parts traverse, and so this car kind of fit the bill perfectly, and it has all of the roof airbags, all that stuff in it. So no real big issues, but yeah, you can see here, this side is good to go. Um, got it parked in the garage here finally. Ran and drove down just fine. No real big issues that we noticed or anything like that. So we think we got a good mechanical runner at least. And we got the windows down so that you can actually open the doors now. <laughs> Couldn't do that in the video the other day. Oh, catches the fender a little bit there. It's kind of got that like Rolls Royce, you know, where they have the uh, curtains that come up in the window and you can, you know, kind of like black out whoever's in the back. Um, so it's got that, but it's just with airbags and it's way more annoying. Uh, so we got to get these guys replaced. So the first thing to pull out this headliner is you got to remove these vents, which you just twist and pull. Put a little 10 millimeter up in there. And I got that guy holding everything in. And you repeat that how many times? We got four in here? Yeah. Four, yeah. four times. And I think we got to pull this light out. And we'll have to, uh, we'll have to pull out both visors and this guy in the center here and then it should come out because it's already popped well i'm about to just pull that pillar out that one's completely out already so we're almost complete on the front section here there is just a bunch of torx t15s that hold on both uh of the visors and then the pillars are held on by a seven millimeter we got a little guy who's training um to be a mechanic right here um and then in the back we still got to pull those pillars off and the lights here. After that, I think we are pretty much ready to come out. So instead of actually removing the whole headliner, we're just gonna leave it sit in here and uh, pull out those airbags. I think they're mostly 10 millimeters up along there. You can hear some, we're on babysitting duty right now. So there's getting some knowledge of car stuff up there. Um, and uh, anyways, we're gonna pull these out. I'm trying to think of anything else that we gotta do, but I think we're just gonna move this around in here and kinda, uh, you know, just move it as we need. So Lance is kinda on it here. We already got two bolts out on this side. How many is there, like four, six? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think and then like they tether in at each end. So, not too bad. Hopefully there's none of those clips like we had in the Buick there that we did. Okay, good. Um, yeah, the Buick Regal, if you ever watched that video, there was some clips for the airbag, roof airbags that we could not figure out how they worked. We ended up just destroying them. Uh, these ones are pretty straightforward. And after a bunch of clips and a couple bolts, that's one side of airbags. And I think we got one more. That's probably hooked up here. Okay. 
Very nice. I like. And there they are. Just gonna do the trick, man. Jump forward a little bit and we got all these airbags all installed. We are ready for this headliner to go back up in. Look, here's the vents. This is how all the air gets to, you know, everywhere back here. I didn't realize that it came in from the back, but I guess it does. And uh, we just gotta pop this up and do a little reinstallation. And just like that, step one here of the Traverse project is pretty much done. We don't have it completely back in, but for the most part it is. We got all the vents, everything like that. We do have this one rip right here, which we may try to sew up a little bit. It's pretty nasty, unfortunately. We usually just reuse the headliners, even though they do rip, because new headliners are extremely expensive. Um, pillars are obviously off, because we're still waiting for those pre-tensioners. Um, and we have a broken visor up there, so we've got to wait to get one of those as well. Other than that, for today we're done. So let's just fast forward to uh, the next project on the Traverse. All right, so next thing here, um, hopefully tonight, I'm gonna be able to remove this fender, this door, that door, and I'm not sure what I'm doing back here yet on this section. We'll definitely do something, uh, either replace the section or possibly um, just body fill it, I'm not sure. So, but goal tonight is to get both these doors off and to get this fender off. Uh, I got this fender like 90% of the way done. Uh, there was like two bolts up here. There were there's one more up in the little section of that cover. Cover looks like that. There's another one that went for this bracket down here. And then there's been two in the door frame. Um, one is up top here. I got it, just loosened it up there, just like a slotted uh, fitting. Then there's one down here in the middle. I don't know if you can see it, but there is the head of it back in that little crease there you go so anyway so I got it uh, loosened up and that's another slotted one and then I think there's two under the rocker panel but I'm hoping that maybe between maybe this cool little ratchet setup I have here I might be able to get under there and not actually have to remove the rocker panel so that's what my hope is here we shall see ah nice two bolts right there I think are my Last two, I'm gonna take a shot of those. All right, those two bad boys are out. And that leaves us here with the fender, which is just about off. I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove that now. Let's see. There she is, all removed. A Little bit of texture to that one. I kind of think that uh, GM might be not be the only one who does this, and I don't even know if they were the first ones to do this, but I really appreciate the way you remove a door on one of these um, now compared to the old doors on older cars, because they put these nice harnesses in every single one of these door jams, and these, at least in the Traverses, but I think I've seen it on other uh, GM vehicles as well. And basically, you just kind of flip a lever down and wiggle a little bit, and you get yourself completely disconnected from the car. So it's not the whole thing of having to like run the wire harness the whole way through the door and rewire it. It's that plus uh, you got what three bolts down here, two up top, and the whole assembly comes off. And actually if you leave the door shut, um, you can just let it hang there. And it, it's a one man job as far as getting it removed. I'm trying to do my best imitation of Top Line Racer. I even went and bought a Collie because I knew that uh, Top Line Racer had a collie, actually two of them, and I thought if I have to do these fill-in videos for him when he's not available, if I don't have a collie in the garage, people aren't going to believe it's actually him. So I went and got the dog, really just for those purposes. I'm going to do the old uh, door release here, and we'll see if I can carry it away. Oh, okay. That's heavy. Woo! All right. Cool. All right, so one door down. Got to remove the seat here still tonight. And then this other door right here. So I'm gonna start working on it. Did I just pick the harness? No, I did not. Huh. There we go. All right. At this point, I'm gonna just work on the seat. That's the last project for this evening is to get this seat removed. So, 
Seat should be all disconnected. I'm hoping I can kind of lay it sideways like so. And get it out of here. And this one, I'm hoping it'll just go in just like that. Cool. All right. There is a half done traverse project. With any luck, maybe I can get the rest done tomorrow. All right. So here is the donor car. Um, there's the one from in the garage. I thought it'd be easiest just to pull them side by side and do it together. Fender, both doors are a little dent in the bottom of the driver door, but it is not bad. And I think it can be fixed up whenever it gets painted. Traverse is all done minus some paint. Now, the reason I'm going to call this guy finished is because it actually is 100. It's already inspected. It's, it is roadworthy, on the road, good to go. It's actually already sold to a family member who needed a winter vehicle, but they needed it right away. So that's why the paint is not going to be done probably till springtime. I didn't want to leave you waiting that long. We might do a video where, um, you know, I, I show it once it's all painted to match and everything. But we put on the new doors, airbags fender all that fun stuff um and it came out like perfect let's let's take a closer look so if you just ignore the fact that it's a different color all of our body lines are pretty close maybe a little bit wider up here but um we're gonna you know we can finesse that even more so because some of this stuff might have to come off for paint and everything we got some scrapes here but that'll come off once we have paint as well and then down through it's pretty straightforward um all the doors open and close really nice it's a little dirty inside you can ignore that for the moment and uh everything just kind of everything kind of works got a new seat in here with uh good airbag obviously we did the whole headliner all that stuff so it is a 100 percent running driving vehicle this side over here and back end wasn't damaged it's so dirty pennsylvania is tough in the winter to film anything especially a black car but yeah going down through it is all good to go this actually is probably one of our best finished rebuilds um, that we've done i mean it looks factory so the real reason our family member bought this is because um if you remember we had that buick regal that we rebuilt like a 2016 17 i'm not sure um back six eight months ago a gold one and we sold it to them they needed a new car it's been working out really well it runs has been running ran and drove perfect except for it kind of kind of blew up um, not, not Buick's fault though. So what happened was, is there was a rock laying in the road, a big rock. It looked like a paper bag. They hit the rock and well, yeah, yeah, the oil just, it was all over the road and ended up burning out the turbo and we ended up just buying a whole new engine. We didn't put the whole new engine in, but we put the turbo in, um, and it seems to be running all right, but we got an engine just in case it only has, we got an engine with like a thousand miles on it. So Worst case scenario, if the engine did get any damage during that time where it was run without oil, uh, you know, we'll be able to replace it and no, really no harm, no foul. But in the meantime, while that was at the shop getting repaired, this was done. So we sold it to them. They needed a four wheel drive for the winter anyways. And so that's, that's obviously, like I said, the reason we don't have paint done on it. So that's really it. This is our first, I think, like I said, first start to finish rebuild. And I hope you enjoyed it. I think I'm going to do a couple more of these, see, hopefully get better at it. I know this one, obviously, was a little jumpy throughout it. But um, hopefully you got the point and saw everything that we did to it. 
but uh, we're gonna do we're gonna do a couple more at least and see how they go because I think it's fun going in one video start complete finish other than paint people are gonna get mad at me for saying that it's finished without the paint being done but it's a running driving licensed vehicle so get over it all right thanks for watching guys please like subscribe and share have a great day